welcome everybody to our podcast, the official GAR Capital Podcast. It is Sunday, April 22nd, 2018. I am Carlos Garcia, the founder and CEO of GAR Capital and your host for every week's podcast, uh, The Markets. You're here to help you succeed and give you some information to help you trade the week ahead. And as you can see on your screen, those who are not listening to the podcast but watching on YouTube, uh, GAR Capital. We are talking earnings. This is the Super Bowl week of earnings. A lot of earnings to go over. So I'm just going to go and reiterate which are the ones we're looking at this week uh, for the podcast uh, listeners and subscribers. And if you're on YouTube, you can look at it yourself on the screen. So Monday we open up will be April 23rd, 2018. First things first in the morning, a couple things I'm looking at. First, I want to look at Halliburton. I don't trade options on Halliburton personally, but again, I want to see how the oil companies move. So again, Halliburton will be very, very big to watch as we are seeing that oil currently is at $68.06 a barrel uh, on oil futures, WTI West Texas Intermediate Crude. So that's the big one we're going to see in the morning. Um, obviously, you can't trade it in the morning. We'll see some pre-market movement after the earnings. And we'll report those in our morning note. But Monday after the close, it gets really, really interesting. Alphabet. Alphabet, which is the parent company of Google. That is the uh, sign, Google, uh, excuse me, the uh, symbol G-O-O-G or G-O-O-G-L. That's Google. Again, it's very, very expensive stock, relatively speaking. But again, it's something that we want to look at because we're getting started with our tech companies. Tech companies are very important. They are the biggest sector in the S&P 500. So again, where tech goes, the market goes. Tech now equates to around 26% of all market cap of the S&P 500, which is a very big slice, quarter of it, basically. So again, it's very important for us to look at exactly what these tech companies are going to do and if they're going to beat earnings. Uh, earnings have been beat across the board, as you can see. We started off with banks, did very well, probably the most uh, profitable quarters for most of the banks, Bank of America, JP Morgan Chase, Citigroup. But again, the stocks fell right after. Uh, so again, it's not as simple as if they beat earnings, but more of the future prospects or guidance. Again, we talked about that in the morning note before last week about the yield curve, and that was hurting banks. Now, we don't have a yield curve issue with tech, but we do have a privacy issue now, as Facebook was in the forefront of it. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg went in front of Congress talking about the uh, privacy issues that was happening. Information was being out there. And of course, the Russian investigation of the election and fake news and what have you. Pick your headline. But again, tech companies, now big tech companies that handle massive amounts of data, not as simple anymore as just uh, you know search engines and uh, social media. Now, for the first time ever, tech companies are now considered the bad guys that banks used to be back in 2006, 7, and 8, 9, and 2010 and 11. So now it gets very interesting. Can the tech market prop up the S&P and the broader market? This is where it's important to see where Alphabet comes in. Let's look at the chart together in Alphabet. Let's take a look here, guys. I'm going to go ahead and open up my browser here. This is TD Ameritrade, our platform. Let's go ahead and type up G-O-O-G. The first thing I always look at in the morning, obviously, is the Dow futures. But let's take a look at Google. This is G-E-O-G. And of course, as everyone knows, we always look at a four-hour chart for options markets. But again, these tar these markets, let's take a look at options trading for Goog, G-O-O-G, which is Alphabet. Let me go ahead and set this up. Let's go ahead and take a look at the 27 calls. And you can just see it's $27. Remember, you have to multiply it times 100. Not a lot of volume, not a lot of open interest because it's so pricey. So moving on. Looking at here at this chart, we could see it has a little bit of a bull run. We fall down a little bit here at the end of the tail end on Friday as the market's close to the red, down 1% for the day. Let's go ahead and move up around to a four hour chart here. And you could just see just a, bull, a bearish movement to the downside on Google itself. Peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. But again, you could see that if we continue and we hit slowly closely to that resistance, uh, to that trend line on 10, around 1080. 1085, let's just call it, or 1090, we're continuing down to the downside. So what I want to look at now is how Google has done after earnings reports. And you could see after their last earning, $9.70 went from 11.86 at the close on the next, by that week, we closed as low as 9.95. So a big, big fall, but then we had a nice little rally back to 11.41, nice little fall again <laughs> that same week. 
So you can see that it's very volatile in the sense of just owning the stock. I'd rather just own Google than trade it personally. It's just so expensive to buy in regards to options. Again, depending on the portfolio you trade with. But again, last quarter was a bit ugly, but we did recover. We're still above that loss. But again, we're not near the highs of where we were at 1186 on a four-hour chart. Here on the first, I think this is the fourth, third quarter last year. Third quarter, yeah, third quarter last year, we had a nice little bump up. Got near 1040, 1060. Range bound for about a week, two weeks, and then broke above, fell down again. Let's go ahead and bring this up on a daily chart. And you can see most of the time when we had earnings reports, the last two, two out of the three, actually two, two here, one here we gapped up, gapped down, we fell down again, gapped up, fell down. Now we'll see where we go. So two out of four were just a nice little soaring, uh, a, soar, a soaring buy movement to the upside. But again, it's just very difficult to decipher where Google is going to be, especially with ad revenue. You know, our company is going to go ahead and keep buying ad revenue on Google. Uh, I mean, excuse me, ad buys on Google. Again, the number one search engine on the planet. But again, they're not exactly invincible either, especially with Congress talking about regulations and privacy matters. So again, at this point, at this juncture, I would stay away. Uh, let's go ahead and see what the market does. Um, if I had to go ahead and place my wager, gun to my head, let's just say, I would say we're going to get a little bit more pressure on, app, on, on Google here. I would say I would target here around 1020. 1020 right here. A nice little support level right out here, 980. But 1020, I think I think we do break down to 1020, maybe lose $50 a share uh, as we get the reports in. Just a lot of pressure here. Um, if you want to take a look at the queues, which Google is a big part of, this is the S, the uh, NASDAQ uh, trust. And you can see how tech has just been zigzagging up and forth. This is a, an actual options uh, contract that we do trade a lot. Again, it gives us a diversity of a bunch of tech companies, but while playing the broader market. And you can see just a range here right in the middle. We've just been stuck. Broke above a 175 back in March. Hit the low point here around April 4th. And we're still just range bound right in the middle. So again, place your bets, black or red, for the most part, on, on, uh, on Google. Oh, brought up the wrong window. Bear with me a second, gents. And let's go ahead. Next day. So Whirlpool, again, in industry companies, again, I'm not really interested in. Uh, open before open on Tuesday. Caterpillar is very big. Caterpillar is a big part of the Dow Dow uh, Dow 30 stocks, Dow Industrial Average. And you can see we're nearing that resistance here on Caterpillar. Again, a very strong stock, one of our top 10 stocks of 2018. We do like this. It's a China play, obviously. So they took a hit in regards to the issue with the trade war that is kind of cooled off with the talks, but it's still on the forefront in government intervention and government talks, especially with. The new economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, who is a former CNN contrib CNBC contributor. Again, he's a very big proponent of free trade. So again, I don't think we're going to have much of a discussion in regards to a trade war. I think cooler heads do prevail. I think it's a lot of tough talk. But again, I like Caterpillar to bounce back, especially with growth around the world. As you can see, uh, the economy is strong around. Europe is getting stronger. Asia is still strong. I still like Caterpillar here on a pullback. I like industrials here. And you can see we're still range bound, but closer to the resistance mark on a on a daily chart. And if you want to take a look at the hourly chart here, you can see just a bullish run. Nice little pull. Pull back here slightly at the broader market fell 1% with the Dow. But again, I do think we can get to around 157, 158, 150. I like pulling here. But again, if we want to take a look at the options market here on Caterpillar for our options members, let's take a look at it. Caterpillar, pretty strong open interest. The volume just isn't there. I wouldn't buy it right away. Let's see how we open on Monday and see if we can make exactly based on our alerts where the market's going to go. But again, I do like this here to the upside. I think we continue the trend. I think Caterpillar does beat their earnings reports. and I think they're going to have really strong guidance. I think they're a big, big beneficiary of a stronger economy as we're nearing closer to 3% GDP. Absolutely. A lot more construction progress. China is not going to be that affected in my opinion. I know they're a worldwide company, obviously. But again, I don't think that China issue is a little bit muted. I think uh, it's going to be muted. It's a little overblown at the moment. We've seen how volatile the markets go when the president tweets. But again, for the most part, we're getting closer to the resistance mark than we are in the support levels here on a four hour. So I do like it to the upside in general. 150, 57, 47 would be my, my alert here. If we break to the upside, I'd definitely buy some calls to ride that wave. Uh, but at the moment, I definitely like Caterpillar more than Google, personally. Uh, that's where I'm looking at here. Uh, definitely look at Lockheed Martin. Again, defense, 
companies, defense stocks, you know, more talk of uh, military strikes in Syria. We'll see what happens. But again, you can just see this bull run up here. The only thing here, guys, when it comes to LMT, again, I'd rather own the stock than I would trade it. Uh, just like Apple, like I've always said, LMT, the options are just not there. You're not going to get as much. I do like Boeing if you do want to trade a defense contractor stock more than LMT, just to, for volume purposes, honestly. But if you want to own LMT, I'm completely with it. I like to target above the recent high of 363, 365, probably my target. But again, right around mm, about $13 away from the highs here. Last time we had earnings, they they kind of range bound and rumped up and then fell again about two weeks later. Uh, same thing here, gap down after earnings. So again, you just have to be very careful where you're going to see in regards to earnings. Uh, they do beat their earnings for the most part. Uh, 323 against 317 on July 18th. Uh, they had a 324 actual against a 331. So they missed on October 24th. The last uh, the last earnings call, they had a $4.30 um, earnings per share versus a 407. Nice beat, soared, and then about three days later fell. But again, I still like the stock long term. I wouldn't trade it to Lockheed Martin. I still consider that a buy in my opinion. Looking at the next stock to look at, it'll be 3M. I do like 3M. Again, part of the Dow, Dow component. That's three letters, M's. And it's just been tanking recently. Just been an ugly, ugly chart on a daily. You can just see as the Dow goes, it's been going too. Uh, we hit the recent highs in January, but then we had a nice little pull. We had not a nice pullback, but an actual correction. Uh, the Dow Jones is actually in the red for the year. So is the S&P. Uh, NASDAQ just hit the red barely. So you could see just, again, just a range bound here in April, not really finding any kind of footing. Um, if you do want to take a look at it daily, if you are watching on YouTube right now, you can actually see that we're closer more to the resistance mark than we are to support. If we made a line here, 221, if we could break above 221, I would definitely send an alert on a daily. If you want to take a look at the hourly, same thing, break above 221, I would definitely play it here. Uh, granted, if we had some good options, uh, options volume and uh, open interest here, but again, 3M, I still think they're gonna beat. They'll beat uh, pretty well. They're a great, great, great company. Um, let's take a look here on a daily and see how they've done since. Uh, they had a gap up, very nice, 210 against 205. They soared to 259 new highs. Uh, again, here at 233 a share, they beat the 225 a share back in October 24th. Gapped up and then fell down the, the, a couple of days later. We had a gap down back in July, even though they beat. Then it went ahead and rallied ahead back to, it took about three months to rally to the point of that, of recent highs in that time frame. And then right around here in April, 216 against a 206 rose up. So three out of four quarters, they've actually rose against their earnings. So they beat all four. They rose three times, gapped up after the earnings. So again, I think that we they, 3M does beat. I think they beat handily and it'll continue to the rise. Um, I do like 3M. I'm bullish on 3M. Next one here, uh, the win. Uh, I don't play Coca-Cola, by the way. So I'm just going to go over the stocks that we usually play. Win is big. I like the win. has been a darling of all options traders, especially due to, especially due to the volatility. Uh, what were the big news for win? Steve Wynn, the owner and founder, or well, the founder of and the CEO of, of Win Resorts, uh, he actually was the one who created the uh, the Mirage and the Bellagio. He created those hotels and then created his own. Looking at it here, you can just see a bull run here on the daily. But again, a lot of volatility due to the issues of sexual harassment to Steve Wynn himself through his divorce. He's officially out of the company. Other than his name stands, he had to sell all his shares. But again, implied moves show a 5.7% move. That's the implied movement. So 5% up or down on the Wynn resorts. Uh, last earnings report, 140 oh, against a 137 estimate. It just gapped down very ugly after that in February after strong volume. Here back in uh, October, nice little gap up and started creating that bull run of about $30 a share, $30 a share rise. And back in July, again, a little bit of a falter, but then bounced back about three weeks later to continue that bull run into that next earnings. And then back into 124 against a 74 cent estimate back in April, they destroyed their number and just soared continually. But you could see just a chugging along escalator style of the stock all the way up to the high of 203, pulled back here. If you bought the dip here right around 160, 
You're not a 192. You stayed patient. I still like Win. It's my favorite name in casinos. I personally stay there when I travel. So again, I may have a little bit of a bias, but I do like the company all around. I think gambling revenue in Macau has been very, very strong every time they've reported. And for the most part, it just looks like they're going to have a stellar quarter. All the controversy aside, Steve Wynn is gone. I think that we're going to get to the upside. 200 will be my target here. But again, if we're looking at an hourly chart and we're going to play for the week, you could just see here uh, just a big range for the most part. Just a really big range. If we wanted to create a channel here, it'd be 188 to 194. If we could break above 194, I like the highs of 196.50 here. So I will create an alert here above hat. We're getting closer, more likely to the resistance than anything else. We do have a rising uh, a wedge above here. If we could break above here, I do like win here as a buy. Not before earnings, but afterwards. If we break above 194.26, I definitely would take a look at that as a bull run to the upside. If you want to take a look at options on win, on call options, let's take a look at that. Better volume here. I like the 192.50s. A little pricey. I'd rather play out of the money calls here. Open interest here on the 200s is very, very interesting. 700, op 700 open interest. Very, very, uh, eh, the volume's pretty low at 274. But you could see the puts and the calls in the money just right there. Even money here. Uh, again, allow the markets to tell you what's going to happen. Don't buy it beforehand, but just wait, wait, wait. Buy your time. Be patient. If it breaks that number that we're looking for, then we'll go ahead and buy some calls. I'd rather confirm than predict. Always confirm first, guys. You don't need to predict everything. Again, if I'm wrong, we don't have money in it, so we're good. Next one here, very interesting, Boeing. We spoke about Lockheed Martin. Let's talk about Boeing, one of the darlings of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the heaviest weighted in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. BA, good old BA, one of our top 10 stocks of 2018. Again, a China play too. And you could say we've had tons and tons and tons of action here. Let's see here on the one hour chart. I want to see if we can put an alert here right around 131, 41.61. Crane alert right above here again to confirm the upside. But you could see just bullish again, another bullish flag here. If we can break above 341.61, I would definitely like to look at calls there. Let's take a look at the last time they reported. Back in, uh, let's see here if I can get this information here. Two four dollars and eighty cents versus a two ninety five estimate. Amazing, amazing work there, at Boeing. They killed it on the thirty first of January, and they gapped up very, very strong, about twenty dollars a share. And then about a couple of weeks later, just fell, and it's just been ranging ever since. Broke ahead to three seventy one to its high, and then just broke down to around close to knocking at the door of three hundred handle. But three hundred six was the low. Bounce back again. A lot of China talk. A lot of China talk was what it was. A lot of the issues of, of the tariffs. But again, what boosts up Boeing? What boosts up Lockheed Martin? War, battles, weapons, Syria. Think of those four things. Very, very important. Again, I'm not here to say that war in Syria is a good thing. I don't like war at all. But again, if we want to pr profit from anything, war is going to be the thing we're going to profit from in regards to stocks. And you could see why. Again, uh, we have a president of the White House who's putting a forward plan against Syria and the dictatorship over there. If they're going to send Tomahawk missiles or what have you, then Boeing and Lockheed Martin are going to be the big beneficiaries of it because most of the defense stocks run in sectors. They run together. And you could see that they're going to be the beneficiary as we get above here. Again, 341, in my opinion, is the line in the sand to break above. And then the next line in the sand will be 356. You could ride that all the way up especially with calls. Let's take a look at some BA. Again, open interest is there. A lot of calls being written. Definitely more on the call side than it is the the, uh, the bear side, the puts. And if I had to look here, I mean, it's a little pricey. I mean, a little more out of the money calls. If you wanted to buy some 350s, that's fine. I could take a look at that. But again, we want to confirm before we do anything. Ryan around quickly as we go on the earnings reports because we have a lot to go over here. Twitter, Twitter. My goodness, Twitter has been absolute a darling in tech. Twitter has been great. Absolutely amazing. Um, Jack Dorsey has been just an amazing CEO. He runs two companies, Square and Twitter. Been amazing. I love Square personally. I own it. I've We have it in our top 10 stocks. And look at this. From to the point of 1556 now, we have doubled, doubled the stock since last August. 
less than 52 weeks, the stock has doubled. Twitter has been an absolute firestorm. We had as high as 36.89, now down to 34, 32. Even with tech kind of slipping here, Twitter has been kind of unscathed. But again, getting closer to resistance here, guys. You could see it here on the four-hour chart. And you could see that we're getting closer again. Rising wedge. If we break above 32.81, just a couple of cents away, maybe another 1% move, I will definitely buy some calls here ahead of earnings if we break above. 36 will be my next target. Maybe even my next target will be 35.85 here, 35.40. We could break above that. I like Twitter here. I definitely do. We've made a lot of money trading Twitter. Let's take a look at their calls. Twitter calls, again, volume is absolutely amazing. Relatively cheap. Love those 33s here at 5,000 in volume. Excellent. I like the 33s here. Break above 32.81. We can get some 33s closer in the money just to confirm the move. Again, they, re they re report on Friday. I mean, on Wednesday. So again, we'll see how we open on, on uh, Monday and see what the action is on Twitter. But I like Twitter to the, to the upside. North Bank Guntrup and General Dynamics don't have as much options action for the most part. But again, we're going to lump this in with the Lockheed Martin and a Boeing defense contractors like it to the upside. Absolutely. Now it gets interesting, guys. Wednesday after the close would probably be the biggest, probably the second biggest day, if not tied for the biggest day in earnings. Facebook, AMD, PayPal, AT&T, Chipotle, Pay, uh, Ford, I mean, just a ton of companies. Facebook. I mean, we had a put on Facebook when Zuckerberg went to Capitol Hill, and boy, were, was I wrong on that one. We were wrong. Uh, it just... It totally went up. We were had puts, killed us, fine. But you could see here 166.70. 170 is my target. If we break 170, we could definitely get back up to the 185s mark. But again, it's all about privacy. It's all about active users. Let's see if the ad revenue is still there with Facebook. It's been a darling, an absolute darling of the NASDAQ. That F Facebook has just been an absolute tear. But it has a 6.1% implied move for Facebook for earnings. Fell 1% on Friday. And you could see, again, just zigzagging and zigzagging as Facebook has been absolutely in the forefront for privacy in online, uh, in the online world we live in. It's all about that. So, again, wait for that 170 break, and then I will trade it if we buy Facebook. Let's go and take a look at the options here. Facebook here, the 170s, again, the second highest call volume. The next one will probably be the 170, 750s, kind of out there for, a tw for April 27th. 5,900 calls. Um, maybe the 172s would probably be a little better. But again, the volume is there. I like it. Again, guys, if you don't want to trade Facebook, it's a little pricey. Try with the Qs. The Qs would be a good one too. So Facebook is done out of the way. Let's take a look here on AMD. AMD, I am a shareholder of AMD personally. and But I got in a very cheap. I got in around $1.04, I believe. I bring a 105. I bought a couple shares there. So I've been, I've been up very nicely. Uh, it's a nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Again, I'm still holding. I like AMD long term. I like what they're doing. But again, most tech has been taking a hit on a four hour chart. Let's take a look at a daily, and you can just see just a bearish move from fifteen sixty five now to nine dollars and ninety nine cents. Does it mean that the stock is done? Not necessarily. Nine dollars and four cents from the low, but bounced back from there. Almost about ten percent move from there. Fell about nine one dollar and uh, one percent on Friday as most of the market turned down to the downside. You can see the NASDAQ did fall. Futures about 104 points, uh, 91 points on the uh, NASDAQ itself. Now, looking at this, you can see the last earnings. $0.08 cents actual, beats, falls. Beats, falls. Beats, it falls. It beats, it falls. So again, four out of four, op uh, four, out of four earnings reports, they've fallen after earnings. Either bad guidance or just share shareholders are just selling or just trading to the downside. So that's what we're looking at here. Again, can we fall down and break a little more? Let's play that. $9.06. I'll create an alert here to the downside. Uh, this would be a good hedge from my position as a shareholder. If you're looking to the long side, I would have to wait for $11.65. I want to make sure that we break above. Um, to be honest with you, I'd probably stay away from AMD unless we get a more, more pressure to the NASDAQ. And I want to take a look at the NASDAQ futures. If we get more pressure on the NASDAQ itself, if we could break down to around 64, actually not even 6,400. This is a daily chart. Let me see it in an hourly instead. If we could break below right this mark, and it is definitely hitting that resistance, 66.49, 39 points away, about 30 points away. If we can break that, guys, again, we're going to get a lot of pressure. 
a lot of pressure to the downside. And the one company I would run a short for pressure in, in, in tech is AMD. That has been a laggard for the most part within the last 52 weeks. Well, actually, probably the last, less than that, maybe the last 20 weeks, it's been under pressure. So again, if you want to take a look at AMD as a possible short, I would actually go with that as a possible short on AMD. And you can actually see here on a one hour chart, just falling from 10.99 down to $9.99. We have a lot of markers there, but again, take a look at the daily. I mean, $9.07 would be my target to break below that. If the NASDAQ falls, it's dragging AMD with it. Take a look at AMD, could be a very interesting put. Let's see what the market is saying on AMD actually. AMD at the moment, definitely a lot of call action instead of put action, very interesting. Very cheap. So again, if you wanted to play some puts, you could do some $9 puts here at $0.14 cents each. If you wanted to straddle it with maybe a $10 put in the money at $0.50, cents, that's not going to cost too much. But again, I'd rather personally see exactly how we do on Monday. But again, that $9.06 uh, uh, level, if we could break that, again, that's $0.80 cents away. That's a lot of movement. That's a, talking about, what, 8%? AMD has a 10% implied move. It's going to be very interesting. Very interesting. I think that uh, once the floor is brought from under it, AMD falls a little further. It could be an $8 stock, personally. We'll take a look at it. Um, but again, long term, I like it. But we're talking here just short term for the markets and earnings reports. Taking a look here on Thursday as we continue, PayPal, great company. One of our top 10 stocks of 2018. PayPal has been an absolute tear. I still love it. I still think we hit 86. We're at 78. If I want to put an alert here, it's definitely going to be right around 82.56 if we can break above it. Uh, PayPal's implied move is 6.71%. Take a look at here. If we could break above uh, 82.56, I'm definitely going to buy some calls. Last time they made some earnings, they fell the last time they made earnings, they beat, and then it fell about $10 a share. Before that, it rose. Before that, it rose. And before that, it rose. So three out of four have beat. The last one was pretty ugly. Um, no real news to say otherwise, but I like PayPal long term. Again, make sure to confirm before we do anything. You want to make sure that you have your your head. You want to make sure that you have your position where you know what you're going to break. Like we have 82.56, break it. We're going to hit it to the upside. Now the downside, if we break above below 72, then we're going to actually hit that because it'll break resistance. So let's create an alert there to the below side here, 72.50, and you can see right there. It's definitely a perfect move. But again, we're right right in the middle of this channel on a daily chart. It's a lot. Let's take a look at an hourly instead. If that's the case, 78.22, I'd rather short here, short term. And if we want to break above 80.89 or 80.75, let me go ahead and create an alert here. That would be my mark to buy some calls. But again, that's for calls within this week because we're doing short-term calls as always. Bullish? Yes. Are we closer to, to 78.34? Yes. But again, we're going to see with the pressure in the NASDAQ, what's been happening. Almost tech stocks are falling. $1.19, uh, 1% to the downside on earnings. So again, always, always, always wait for the most part. So again, guidance is key. Don't buy anything until we see exactly what's going to, going to happen. Again, you don't want to predict. You don't want to predict, guys. You want to confirm. So very important. Visa, Visa has, oh, let's, I forgot. Let's take a look at the PayPal calls and PayPal puts. PayPal calls, not much. Volume's, uh, volume's not there, but the applied interest, open interest is there. Same thing. Well, definitely more calls and puts, definitely on, on open interest. So again, very interesting. We'll take a look at it on Monday and get the statistics on it and see if we get some more uh, call action. And see where we go from there. Uh, Visa, I like Visa long term, but again, their options are terrible. I've always said that. Very, very bullish. They don't have any credit risk. They're just a processing company. The only thing that can maybe derail Visa is the rise of cryptocurrency. That's years away, my personal opinion. 125, I say we beat. Um, if we take a look at the last earnings reports, uh, you could see back in, they, they beat back in February. It gapped down, then bounced back. But never, hasn't hit the all-time high of 126.88, which was back near Feb, back in January, where the market was near its all-time high. So again, beta is there. The beta is there for Visa. Uh, it is a Dow component, by the way. Uh, 90 cents against 88 cents beat back in October. Back in July, 86 against 84 cents rose. 
and so on and so forth. So again, they've beaten consistently. Long term, I like Visa. Don't trade it. The options are terrible. Don't waste your time. Next one we have here. Uh, AT&T, again, AT&T is a utility. We don't trade it much. I, I own the stock personally. I like AT&T due to their 5% dividend. Um, we had some so, so, uh, class action lawsuit talking about how Verizon and AT&T may have rigged rigged uh, some uh, wireless wireless uh, prices for the most part. But again, uh, I'll read you the headline. Verizon and AT&T shares wrapped after New York Times reports that the DOJ has opened a probe into coordination by the carriers to hinder consumers from easily switching character carriers. So nothing to do with price. It was keeping them from moving from carriers back to back. So that's where that's going. Um, 34.67 is a stock. Again, I still like it long term. I wouldn't buy any options on it. Just skip it. Skip it, skip it. Ford, we had a great Ford trade last week. Um, do I think we can continue? Let's take a look at the chart with their earnings reports. Again, China's play too. Fell at the end of the day. And you could see last time they've had earnings, they beat 43 cents against 33 cents back in February. No, back in October. Back in January, they missed and fell very, very sharply. Um, very risky. The last three quarters, they fell after earnings. So again, it could be very risky. Uh, the floor on a daily chart is right around 1020. If you want to take a look at 1020 as a possible short, uh, that'd be actually very, very prudent. But for the most part, 1153 would be my mark to break above to buy some calls if we get there. Again, a very wide range. You're talking about a 10% range. 4.1% implied volatility, implied movement on the market on Ford. Looking at Ford calls and Ford puts on our options chain. Big, big volume on the $11 calls, 14 cents. A lot more call volume than it is put volume. So $11 a call would be interesting to get into, but at the moment, I would just hold off and wait. Again, like we're saying, hold off and wait. Chipotle, one of my one of everyone's favorite stocks to short. <laughs> I look at this range here on the daily. Since 499, Bill Ackman got in. Bless his, bless his soul. He's just been absolutely just getting murdered. 331 a share now. 332 a share. Let's take a look at the two-hour chart. A one-hour chart, excuse me. And you can see just bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. 351 the high, 331 now. And we're getting right within the range that Chipotle has been staying in. And the big, it's a wide range indeed. 315 to 331. Uh, that's what we're looking at here. 7.3% implied move on earnings for Chipotle. Um, if we could break above 335, I would say buy some calls for the most part. But again, we have to see a very good report in my opinion. Looking at the daily chart so we can see the last earnings, 134, they, they missed in February and it fell very ugly to 260. It bounced back very, very handsomely. 69 cents against 170, terrible call in October, fell very badly. Back in uh, July 25th, 232 versus a 219 estimate, beats, still falls. Back in uh, April 25th, 17. They did beat handsomely. Maybe about a month later, began the fall. So again, Chipotle. I'm still bearish on Chipotle personally. Uh, I still think it has a lot more to go. I still think it's more of a $260 stock than it more is a $499 stock personally. But you know what? It just had more E. coli breakouts, more news, bad news. Chipotle has just been an absolute disaster since $499 back in last year. Do I think that we continue the fall? Yes, I do. But again, doesn't mean we can't trade calls short term. I would not own the stock, but I would definitely love to trade it if we can. Out of the money calls will be the best way to go. The volume's not there for this week. We'll keep an eye on it for you guys. Looking at the rest of the week, uh, eBay. Let's take a look at eBay. eBay is the last one we're looking at for this that day. And eBay, high is 46, not 42. Last earnings. Back uh, 59 cents missed in January, but then gapped up and gapped down about two days later. Next one, uh, 48 cents against 48, uh, about 49 cents missed, fell again. Back in July, fifth, they missed 45 cents against 46 cents. July, it missed, it continued its downslide. Um, eBay, I can't say that I use that personally. The fact that they broke away from PayPal, I don't like it. I'm a little bearish on eBay personally. 
looking at the uh, hourly chart, again, you could see it has gone up. But again, even with the NASDAQ falling, it's still been continuing uh, chugging along 0.21% to the upside. Oof. I mean, it's going to be a very interesting one here on eBay. Um, I probably would not trade this personally. Let's take a look at their calls and puts. More than likely, we're probably going to skip this, this stock. Volume is just not there. I'm probably open interest is definitely there on the on the put side on the 39 and a half and the 40 strikes. But again, we're gonna have to see exactly what they have. Again, more likely they're probably gonna miss again on their earnings reports. But again, sometimes missing can still bring the stock up. So it's not as simple as just placing your bet on where you think it's gonna go up or down. You have to see where the sentiment is. And I don't like the sentiment for eBay at the moment. Uh next one here, Raytheon. Again, Raytheon, go ahead and put with Boeing and North Rock Gumprin. North Drop, Gutman, and Grano Dynamics, and Lockheed Martin. Keep those together in a sense. Not exactly a ton of action in regards to calls and options. But again, interesting to watch if you want to own it. Uh, UPS, we don't trade. Uh, AAL, American Airlines. Uh, airlines are very interesting. Ugly, ugly chart. 53 down to 46. We want to break down below at 45.19. If we could break above this level here on this hourly chart of 48.12, then I'd probably buy some calls to confirm. Let's take a look at a daily chart. I like American Airlines personally. I fly with them. Last time they had their earnings report, 95 cents against 93 cents. What happened? They gapped down. They gapped down the day before, actually. And you can see it's just been up and down, up and down. Back, We got up to 57 in March. Now we're down to 46. Lost $10 a share. $1.42 against a 40 estimate. Gap down. We just been gapping down after every earnings report, uh, unless it was back in April 27th, where it was 61 cents against a 57 cent actual, and then we started to make that rise back to 53 from 42. But again, an ugly chart here. I mean, I, do I think we gapped down? Probably. 45.19 will be my line in the sand. If we break down below that, then definitely target 42.66 on a daily chart. Um, I don't see anything maybe bouncing the back. Fuel costs are rising, so it could be have some pressures on margins. Always issues with with unions and the fair wars and what have you. I don't like American Airlines here. Um, let's take a look at their calls here and puts. AAL, not much action other than the 47 calls on the volume. $47 strike calls, uh, $1.12 on the ask. Um, not very bullish this trade because at 46.80 is where the call is, 20 cents away from being in the money. But again, for the most part, I wouldn't want to try, I, I don't want to buy this stock. If anything, I'll probably buy some puts. Be interested in, in AAL puts. AAL puts, if we break below 45.19, could be a home run here, guys. Could be a home run. And of course, the big elephant in the room, probably my favorite stock out of all, is Amazon. Amazon is absolutely my favorite stock. 2018, I've been saying it, 15.31, the high of 16.17. Uh, it's not as beta as you know any like a Boeing or what have you, uh, where Boeing or Apple or Bo Apple goes, the market goes. Apple, Amazon is its own world. Uh, Fifteen twenty-seven at the moment. I still think with a good, good beat, three seventy-five against one ninety-three estimate back in February, they destroyed it, stayed range bound, and then we started breaking away back about twenty days later. So again, patience on this one. Maybe some three-week calls. It's very expensive. But it's a big part of the QQQ. Own it. If you don't have Amazon stock yet, I would recommend you own it because this is still, in my opinion, a $2,000 stock. This will probably be the first trillion dollar company in market cap. It will surpass Apple, in my opinion. Amazon has a lot more growth to go. I will not trade options on this, and I'll show you why for my YouTube subscribers. Amazon.com, their options price just for this week is about $48 each. $49 for in the money. Unless you have that money lying around, you're talking about $4,000, $5,000 for one contract. Mm, maybe not the smartest thing in the world. But again, if you do own Amazon, like I do, disclaimer, I own Amazon stock. Been holding it. Love it. I ain't trading it. Microsoft. Love it. Own it. I don't trade the stock. I definitely love trading the options. One of my favorite companies here. In my opinion, Microsoft is a $100 stock. Absolutely. We're going to break $100. After earnings is the question, we're not sure. We gapped down last time. After their earnings, 96 cents against 89 cents. We had calls on that. We didn't break down. We ranged. We took uh, we took the loss there. Looking at here, big gap up, 84 cents against 78 cents back in October. Back after before that, 73 cents against a 98 cent actual back in July. Range, range, and then just range for about two, three months. 
And then we have 73 cents against 72 cent estimate back in April. We range, 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 range the whole way around. But again, the big movement was here back in January 31st, 96 cents against 89 cents. And then we fell down, hit around 84, and then bounced back down to nine, back up to $95 even. If we break $97.04, I am buying calls absolutely. $97.04 is my target. If we break below, ooh, if we break below this number, $91.83, we could buy some puts. But again, I, I think Microsoft is probably one of the better stocks in the S in the uh, in the QQQ. Looking ahead here, 9704. If we can break above, very interesting to buy some calls with a target of 100. Let's look, look at those calls, guys. MSFT, $100 calls would be the one I play. Let's see if we can bring more options here. $100 calls, definitely good open interest, great volume, 55 cents. I'd play that. Absolutely. Be a very good call to make um, for the upside. Definitely a lot more bullish volume on Microsoft. It's been a darling of the tech companies. And it's not a software company anymore. Most people think it's a cloud company now. And I, you know what I like about cloud companies? I love those cloud companies. If you want to reiterate what cloud companies I like, I'll tell you right now. Red Hat, Oracle, uh, Cisco. I don't like IBM, so keep IBM away. Adobe. Adobe, Adobe is one of my favorite companies to have. Top 10 stock. Take a look at Adobe too. Very interesting on cloud, please. Skipping away. I don't trade. I don't trade Intel for the most part, but we can take a look at Intel together. INTC, uh, fifty-one fifty-three right here, and you can see the last time we've had earnings, it fell as well the week after. Before that, uh, ten twenty-six, we had a one dollar one actual versus an eighty-one cent earning soared, and in July seventy-two cents against sixty-nine cents, we broke above. And back in last year, 427, 67 cents against a 60 cent cents actual. It actually missed. And we actually fell down to 32. It is now a $54 stock. Last year we were around 32. Again, more chips, more chips. Chip makers are making money. Uh, other than AMD, unfortunately. But uh Intel is a good one. A very good company here. Uh 5153 is our current market price. We're close up to the all-time highs. Uh, or actually the daily highs here, 50, all time highs, excuse me, 54 would be a good alert to break above. So I'll put it at 53.97. If we break above, maybe get some calls. If we break above, um, if they have good guidance and what have you, Intel here, great, great volume. I like it. The 52 calls, 2,928 volume, 123 for a contract. I like it. I like Intel. Again, I want to make sure that if we break that level, we can go long. So I definitely like Intel here. And we're moving on, last but not least, Exxon Mobil and Chevron. As you could tell, we've been talking about it, we're talking about it. $70 a barrel is my line in the sand. It was 65. We broke 65. We've been going long on oil. I definitely like it at 70. If you bought oil companies back when we talked about about six months ago, the value play, you're going to make some money here because, well, Exxon Mobil needs a lot more to go. $79 a barrel, looking at a daily. We had had 89 Oil companies, for the most part, when oil rises, it's going to take a little bit of a delay for these companies to hit. I still think ExxonMobil is worth near $100 a share. It has a lot more to go. Again, $79 a barrel with OPEC issues and the president talking. ExxonMobil definitely needs a higher oil uh, costs. $70 a barrel will definitely jump it up. I don't expect good earnings here. I don't expect amazing earnings or for the market to even care. More likely, we're going to break down below. If anything, 72, take a look at that. If we take a look at an hourly on ExxonMobil, 78 would be my line in the sand. We're at 79 at the moment. Break down below this channel. I'll create an alert down to the breakdown of a put side. Let's take a look at XOM on, on calls and puts. A lot more call options, uh, interest here than put options. Taking a look at that, $79 even. It's very, very interesting. Looking at that. This is exactly what I would play. More likely the put side if we break down. If we break above, I would actually want to break above the highs of 79.82. Create an alert here. If we break above, if we get a nice little gap up, then I would definitely buy it here. CVX is going to be very interesting. The same thing as ExxonMobil can. Just a delay for the most part. And you can see bullish here. Let's put a little uh, mark here on 125, maybe 124.93. If we can break below 122.01. 
I would create that alert here to the downside. Again, it's all earnings. We'll see how their earnings do. But again, don't put much weight into their earnings, more into the prospects of higher oil prices for CVX and ExxonMobil, Chevron and ExxonMobil. A lot more call side here, a lot more bullish bets on Chevron looking at the volume and open interest. But again, it's going to be very interesting to see what they report on Friday if they give good guidance. I'm very interested in their guidance than anything else. So that's the week we have ahead, guys. I had to roll through everything as much as I could. Again, as quick as I could. Tons of stuff to get into. Guys, a lot of opportunities out there. Like I've said, if there's a time to join our options group or our teaching group, it is now because we have one more week, well, a couple more weeks because we have some in May. But very interesting stuff coming. Very interesting stuff coming. Uh, a lot of opportunities. I love earnings season. This is the Super Bowl week of earnings. You have so many opportunities to trade these. Again, if Alphabet and Amazon are too expensive for you, QQQ is the way to play it. Very interesting stuff. Make sure to the Lumpen, Raytheon, North Rock Gumpen, Grinnell Dynamics. Their options are not that great, but Boeing is a great call. Great play for defense. Caterpillar, again, watch out for China. Alphabet, privacy, Facebook, privacy, AMD, downside. Visa, not as much good at volume on the calls. PayPal, I like. Ford, take a look at the downside. AT&T, we don't trade as much. eBay, not very fan of. Chipotle, definitely not a fan of. We're just going over everything. Microsoft, I'm a fan of. Amazon, don't trade it. Just buy it and own it. That's where we are. Quick, quick review on everything. When I do like to the upside as well as more of the controversy has subsided with Steve Wynn. There you have it, guys. That's our week this week. Pretty quick, pretty quick stuff. So GA Air Capital is the GA Air Capital FX is the website. Take a look at our website. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you have any questions, feel free to type in the comments below. If you do like this podcast, it's a simulcast. If you like this podcast, please, please subscribe to our podcast on Apple Podcasts or on the Anchor app, which you're listening to. Uh, of course, any questions, GARCapitalFX.com is the site. GARCapital at gmail.com is the email address. Next week, I, there will not be a podcast. Just wanted to give you that information. There will not be a podcast next week due to the fact that I will be out of town. If anyone is in Las Vegas next Friday and Saturday, I will be there. I would love to shake your hand, talk markets with you. Let me know. Let me know. Shoot me a direct message on Instagram. Definitely see what we can set, work something out where we can say hi to each other, maybe take a photo, what have you, talk some markets over some drinks. I'd love to have that time with you. If you're a fan, we love our fans. We love our followers. We love our students. Definitely wanted to let you know that. And then I will be staying at the Wynn Hotel, so let me know. Again, my name is Carlos Garcia, I'm the founder and CEO of GA Air Capital. Thank you so much again for stopping by again for our podcast and going over our YouTube channel and this last YouTube video. No podcast next week. No video next week. Guys, just give you the heads up. And, uh, I mean, more great stuff coming. More great stuff coming. Don't forget, the Twitch channel will be live soon. Twitch channel. If you like these podcasts, you like these videos, wait till we have that Twitch channel. We're going to talk markets live. Very fun stuff. So again, my name is Carlos Garcia, again, founder and CEO of GAR Capital. Have a great rest of your weekend. Let's make it a profitable one, guys. Have a good one all.